Hello and welcome to Insta Blogs Global Report. This is Sukhmanin's fresh updates and more citizen voices from all over the world. Stories of the day are Mohammed Ajmo Kassab, the only surviving suspect of Mumbai killings, pleads for death in the court. The government of Pakistan warns people against sending provocative messages to public officials. Afghan President Hamid Karzai urges West to devise a new strategy for curtailing Taliban. And Jordanian and Egyptian officials meet to start out problems regarding Red Sea Dead Sea Water Conveyance Project. An Indian judge has accepted the confession of the lone surviving gunman from the shooting attacks in Mumbai, but said that the trial would proceed anyway. The young Pakistani gunman, Ajmal Ahmed Kassab, unexpectedly confessed Monday to taking part in the November attack that paralyzed India's financial capital and killed 166 people. Sidhashi Kapakyao says that guilty plea is meant to seek lesser sentence. This is citizen journalist Shikha Patel reporting from Indian Insta blogs. Confession to the Mumbai killings by Mohammed Ajmal Kassab, the main and sole surviving suspect from a group of terrorists who attacked two Mumbai hotels and a restaurant, is a deliberate attempt to seek leniency. There is absolutely no need for either consternation or joy at the admission given the overwhelming weight of evidence given from injured people, police personnel and telephonic records. He knew that by pleading not guilty, he would have to face the wrath of the court and hence decided to plead guilty in the hope of getting a lesser sentence. The trial will, in coming days, expose the terrorists infrastructure in Pakistan and help identify the accomplices in this crime. After warning people from sending provocative or ill-motivated messages against government officials to print media, Pakistani government has moved to punish citizens for shooting certain kinds of emails and text messages. Jekarim Khan from Pakistan condemns the government's decision which he thinks could be used for public prosecution. This is C.J. Karim Khan from Peshawar in Pakistan. The government's move to punish its citizens for sending certain kinds of messages earned condemnation from the civil society. Earlier, the government had warned people through the print media to refrain from sending provocative or ill-motivated stories or messages against government officials. Doing so has been made public punishable by up to 14 years in prison and confiscation of property. But news sources criticized the Interior Ministry for not making it clear what exactly it meant by ill-motivated email messages. However, the Federal Investigation Authority has clarified that they'll only investigate a case upon receiving a complaint from an individual against a provocative message or an SMS. The authority said it would not bar people from their right to express themselves as far as jokes, political comments and debate were concerned. Still, the vagueness of the government's directive on email and text messages has left many people wondering if it will not be used for political persecution of civilians. Afghanistan's President Hamid Karzai has urged the West to formulate a new strategy for its country. The President thinks that reinforcing the military force against Taliban in Afghanistan may not bring positive results and will be more helpful if peace negotiations are held with elements within Taliban who are willing to surrender. RCJ has more of the story. President Hamid Karzai's proposal for making peace with the Taliban is a crucial important move as it tends to secure the lives of thousands of Western soldiers fighting on the Afghan soil, the lives of countless Afghan and foreign citizens living and working in Afghanistan, and perhaps the lives of many other people in the neighboring land of Pakistan who are falling a prey to the Taliban and the war on terror. It will make sense if negotiations be held with those Taliban who are ready to surrender, but the terms on which a peace deal is proposed must be carefully reviewed by the international community to make sure that, that militants do not bring more disaster in future. Also, by allowing some Taliban to surrender, their overall force can be broken and military action against the others can be made more effective. The reduction in militancy, including foreign attacks on Taliban in Afghanistan, is the cry of the moment, since innocent civilians are also being killed and injured during the armed conflict. President Karzai's proposal, if pursued by the Western forces, is likely to bring down the level of militancy and destruction that is tearing Afghanistan down. Officials in the Jordanian Ministry of Water and Irrigation have met with their Egyptian counterparts to discuss Egypt's worries over Red Sea Dead Sea Water Command project. Asija Wadi Bugarek says that this project may not help resolve Jordan's water woes as not enough research has been made around its effects on both the water bodies. This is Wad Abu Zarek reporting for the Instablox from Jordan. Officials from the Jordanian Ministry of Water and Irrigation have met with Egyptian officials to discuss Egypt's worries over the Red Dead Water Conveyance Project. 
This comes as a trial from the Jordanian part to accomplish what is seen as a step towards solving the problem of water in Jordan, which is considered the world's fourth poorest country in water. On the other hand, Egyptian officials have declared their worries concerning this project's effect on the Red Sea, a subject that was addressed during their visit to Jordan, which they will conclude with a visit to both seas. Jordan is poor in water, but it doesn't seem like this project will be the answer to Jordan's problems as not enough research has been made around its effects on both water bodies. If you want your voice to be heard by millions, that is the blog for your choice. You can contact us at cjinstablog.com. That's all for today's show. This is back with Fresh Updates and more Citizen Voices. Till then, it's goodbye from the entire team of Global Force.